Let's talk about why we don't talk about the Ukraine. My best way to illustrate this is my mother's father's family all came to the US in the 1890s. On Ancestry.com, their immigration paperwork says they came from the Kingdom of Galicia, whose capital is now the modern day Lviv. But my DNA from that side pings in what is now Poland, except my relatives staunchly referred to themselves as Ukrainians. Why? Like most of Western civilization, all the complications all go back to the ancient Greeks. To the north of the Black Sea was what they saw as an untamed, mysterious land full of tough, nomadic, horse-riding people. This was the home of the barbarians, Amazons, and centaurs. Guys, those aren't centaurs. Those are just people riding horses. This was the Western world's first final frontier. This land became so well-trafficked and heavily fought over because it was the Vikings and Mongols' only path towards the spoils of Rome, and a terrific place to grow wheat. In order to defend themselves, the people living there united with their Viking buddies to the north to create the Kievan Rus. This is when we get our first mention of the border region of this new federation as the word Ukraina. Most likely an old Slavic word having some combined meaning of frontier, region, and border. The name sticks, and even though ironically the borders themselves would shift hundreds of times over the centuries, these unique people from that ancient frontier start to call themselves Ukrainians, no matter what country or kingdom laid claim over them, which truly cemented itself in the 17 to 1800s as Russia asserted itself on the area and started to crack down on the very vocal Ukrainians, who were being inspired by the nationalistic movements happening in the 13 colonies, France, and spreading through Europe. This was the mess which my family was fleeing and why they referred to themselves as Ukrainians even if they left before the country that bore that name was officially founded. It's this independent Ukrainian push that's one of the reasons that eventually leads Lenin and his buddies to start the Soviet Union, uniting multiple cultural identities into one united pole, even if that's ultimately not what happens at all. Amongst the myriad of ways that the Soviets tried to diminish the Ukrainian identity in the 20th century was language. The Russian language has different rules for defining location and place, but it pretty much translates into English as the lesser locations like rivers and regions can have a the and larger, more prominent ones like cities and countries do not. Like you can say you are from the Bronx, but you cannot say you're from the New York. Through this trick of language, saying the Ukraine hints that it's not a country, which goes against thousands of years of history of the Ukrainian people as a unique culture who deserve a sovereign home of their own. The Soviets made saying the Ukraine so common in practice, you can find it all over the place. So. One of the best ways you can stick it to the Russia and the Putin is to just drop the definite article on Ukraine.